Well, hello and welcome back. And we are so happy to welcome a return guest and dear friend to the show, Dr. Sharna Stryer. It is my pleasure to see you two. Same here. Hi. We're honored to have you back and uh, certainly at a good time. I was very excited to uh, have you contact me uh, last week with this uh, new project you had in mind and incredibly honored that you thought of me to work on this with you. Of course, as we've been talking for, well, a couple months now, the new normal, if we can even use that word, is uh, the corona pandemic and the uh, shelter in place, or uh, if not uh, full quarantine that people are finding themselves uh, in, in different parts of the country. And I'm sure, like us, you've seen it uh, in your practice with your patients. Mm -hmm. So what, yes. what is it that you're seeing now? Um, well, I, you know, it, it's such an incredible situation that suddenly got dropped on the whole entire world. Uh, and so I think the first thing I saw was people shock. What do we do? How do we configure this? How do we manage to make it happen? Some people are alone. Some people are with family. Some people are with new relationships where they shelter together. Some people are with their significant others or their spouse or children or family. And so as I began to talk to people and step into their ways of adapting to the situation and the impact it's having on them, I thought, yes, I'm gathering anecdotes, but wow, wouldn't it be really great to get some actual data? So that's how I came to the idea of developing this survey, which I'm hoping you all will participate in. And um, Dr. Siegel, if you could tell them at the end or whenever you'd like to. Yes, indeed. We'll be talking about the survey yeah. and the questions on the survey and why it's, uh, uh, why it's gonna be helpful for folks to give us this, uh, as we said, a snapshot of um, mm -hmm. what it's like, of course, with That's our lives. Uh, sex talk, you know, we wanna know the sexual impact Mm -hmm. on, on intimacy and on uh, sex itself and how people are having sex or not having sex. Mm -hmm. Or how they're, how they're relating and what that impact right. is on them. Like for right. instance, if you are, what I'm finding is whatever sort of the situation is, whether you're inclined to depression, to anxiety, to difficulty sleeping, Certainly, that gets more exacerbated as people are coping with this and the unknown of it. And so it is forcing people to really maybe go a little further. They can't run from their issues or distract themselves. Right. So they are, uh, and in this case, with some help, you know, learning how to negotiate this new normal and deal with these issues and sometimes much more effectively. So that's one thing that's happening. But right. absolutely, there is reports about increased uh, alcoholism, increased mm -hmm. drug addiction, sadly increased some um, physical or sexual abuse. And you know, when you put people in a confined space that mm. do not really have good skills to handle conflict, and uh, under very dire circumstances of being furloughed, money problems, right. it's very difficult. And as, as you right. said, this is unprecedented. And yeah. even solid couples who are used to being together are probably not used to being together 24-7. Mm -hmm. And right. uh, you, you, we, we were discussing this the other day. Uh, if you have a conflict or a fight, you can't walk away. Mm -hmm. That's right? right. If there's no place to walk to. There's no safe place. There's you know, no so safe place. But what is great is that one can create that safety. Right, right. One can create exactly. we're in and developing the tools for it. So for instance, um, and there's been a number of articles about this, mm -hmm. how does it impact, for instance, because in my practice, I deal primarily with millennials. Many of them are single. And mm -hmm. so they may be by themselves, but anxious to date or they may be separated from a relationship. How 
what, how do they, you know, connect and establish rapport and, and express some of the more intimate erotic needs? And it's lending itself to something that I think is very sweet, which is more courting behavior, because without the physical interchange, sort of, you know, the touchy, the feely, kind of acting on the chemistry, they have to really explore each other in a more intimate, personal way. They have to talk. They have to learn about each other. I mean, and dating. Right. <laughs> Right? Dating. Well, we used to call dating. Something yeah. so different to yeah. this generation that's so used to, yeah, they're used mm -hmm. to hooking up online, but then it goes right to hooking up in, in the real world. Exactly. So removing that from the equation, now hey. people really have little choice but to yeah. learn how to court. I like that you use that word. Yeah. Even yeah. online. And yeah. that is actually something that's surprising to attach or associate to millennials. Uh, because we do tend to think more of uh, hookup culture as opposed to sort of intimate bonding as the standard for relationships. But, you know, at the same time, we also can't ignore the fact that, you know, there is a spike in Tinder and, and hookups that are happening at the same time. So it's to me, to see it really go in both of those directions speaks to for lack of a better word, a confusion that a lot of people have about how do you form intimate connections and erotic connections. Well, I think it also spoke to the, the level of a tolerance you have to risk, which is also something I think that particularly young people can grapple with. But yet, they're, you know, they're getting very creative in their outreach and that uh, they may have like dates online or, uh, you know, with the elimination of having to deal with who's picking up the check, or, yeah. you know, who's going to, you know, how quickly are we going to move into the, the sexual arena? I mean, it, it lends itself in many ways uh, to a higher, more personal level of communication that has the capacity of really bonding. Now, if that rapport is not present, which oftentimes, of course, is clouded by the, you know, the cloud of lust and uh, erotic desire. And intoxicants. Yeah. Yes, that you might say, I really don't have anything in common with this person. You know, that's possible as they're dating. Now, people who, uh, and I have a, a number of patients that are separated. And so that brings up an issue of, geez, they're in another place. What are they doing? How, you know, what routine do we have about talking and being? And it forces them also to talk about things that perhaps they don't normally talk about. Now, couples that are together, um, it, that's an interesting thing. There could be a pet, you know, that uh, a, a children. So privacy becomes a high commodity. Mm hmm mm hmm and so what oftentimes is suggested is they have to really carve out that time, just like you have to carve out a date. And one couple I spoke to this morning, I thought it was so sweet. They set up uh, an intimate dinner in their living room. They had, uh, they changed their clothes into more, you know, dress up clothes, right. you know, cause you know, we're all walking around very leisurely hmm. and they had an intimate dialogue and that just led to very naturally to uh, a little bit more of sensual touching. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of thing that certainly uh, myself and therapists like me are encouraged, you know, Right. Encouraging. Are you recommending that couples lock their children in the bathroom <laughs> or tie them up to the, the washing machine in the garage to keep them out of the way? <laughs> and so, uh, yes, and my lawyer says, please send that card to them if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. I mean, that's something they have to negotiate. And, but we do talk about a certain amount of, uh, you know, the downtime. This couple that I was referring to, actually, they, they don't have children. Mm -hmm. 
Right. But I've had to negotiate it with their cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, something sure, that... I'm sorry, go ahead. Something that uh, is so much a part of coupling is how to work through conflict, how to be heard. Mm -hmm. You know, all of that is even more of an issue because rapport is so important and, and you know, which heightens the desire for connection. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's really talking about how to listen to one another, how to reflect, you know, not, not to sort of create your story about what you imagine that person is feeling, but to inquire, which I call perception. And also because you're 24 seven there, you know, you may be going down a path where you're not hearing, you're getting too emotional mm -hmm. and you've got to have a safe word really. And my kind of funny word is pineapple, where it's like, I have to step away and collect myself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So your three Ps again? <laughs> Paraphrase, which is what I hear you say is that you asked me for my three Ps. Is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Very uh, good. Per perception check is, uh, you seem to be uh, in a good space right now. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> and pineapple is mm -hmm. pineapple. Yeah. I, right. I, but I'll come back to that conversation. I've just lost my perspective. Well, if, if I can add right. on to that, because I want to explain that uh, as well for the people that are listening, that this idea of having a safe word, it's not really just a sexual thing. It really is a very, very important important thing. And, you know, I've always, when, when I uh, was working with couples, I had always sort of had a rule that when the communication is getting lost in the emotion, when anger, frustration, all of this stuff is rising, somebody has to call time out. Mm. You yes. have to stop. We cannot communicate through emotion. Now, of course, the person that calls time out has the obligation to call time back in, but they need to take that rest. They need to take that break. And so many people tried to push through their anger and their frustration. And ultimately it ends up being sometimes a calamity. Sure. That it just I, cannot I, work because you yeah. can't be successful. I like the way you explain that. Absolutely. And the key thing in all that is that they're not walking away from it. They're just stepping away so they can gain more objectivity yeah, and exactly. come back to it. Right, let the I, emotion I often, die down. I, I also often use, uh, I tell couples, we're going to borrow from the kinky folks and, and use a safe word and tell them to make it as ridiculous as they mm -hmm. can. Yeah. So something that can break the tension. Yes. Right? But, that, but I always warn them, and it can't be used to shut down. It can't right. be like a stiff arm, like, I don't want to listen to you anymore. Yeah. It has to be like mm -hmm. you said, I need a, you know, this is like uh, blowing a whistle and throwing a flag. Uh, in yeah. A Right? Somebody has to say, whoa, mm -hmm. we're there again. We can't go there. We promised we wouldn't go there. Right. Yes. And, and if I could add too, another thing that I think is very important that we have to always be willing to ask ourselves, especially now, because people have to remember that this is going to end. Mm. Right? In one way or another, this is going to end. We're going to go back to some semblance of our lives without being shut in and sheltering and, and distancing. Which and would be good for us to we talk to about, how that. to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And one of the things that I do ask people, and I, to be honest with you, I've usually asked this of men, to ask themselves this question before they react. What is more important right now? Mm -hmm. Making this work or being right? Mm. Right? What's more important, being successful or being right? And how many times have we forced that issue? We, you know, we beat our partner over the head with our being right, and now we're alone and we're by ourselves. They're gone. So what did we win? Talk about a, a Pyrrhic victory. Exactly. Exactly. Well, let's uh, let's talk to uh, about this survey and uh, the wonderful information, and again, what prompted you to, uh, what all of this led to, mm -hmm. uh, well, you want to know, and what are we asking folks to share with us? Uh, we're asking them to share how they essentially quarantine, what were the, uh, the conditions, the circumstance with whom, during that time, what, 
how do they experience their sexuality? How do they express it? Um, how, what did they learn? How did they uh, connect with the people that they are, you know, intimately involved with or casually involved in? But then also as a result of this, and as the quarantine is lifted and as we have to socially distance, how is that going to be? Are they going to be more inclined to, uh, to stay away? Like here they're anxious for contact, but how does that operationalize? A lot of people are afraid of kissing and touching for, for fear of getting the virus. Right, there's a real approach avoidance that people are having. Exactly, which in many ways is part of the issue that we therapists deal with, is that approach avoidance. But what I'm finding is, is that some of that has sort of fallen away. I think people are more comfortable in expressing their vulnerability, their desire for connection, and are absolutely uh, sort of confronted with how do I go about that? Now, I, I, I you know, as I witness, you know, really some people might just toss it to the, to the wind. And we'll have to see how that goes. But my recommendation is that you, you know, you have to do your best to maintain some order of social uh, distance and, and kind of just be aware of all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So not being so quick for the casual social kissing, the casual social hugging. Uh, right. we got into a habit with complete strangers. Oh, hey, nice to meet you. And we're hugging and kissing them. Maybe we need to back off from mm -hmm. that a little bit as well. Is that yes. kind of what I hear and what you're saying? And, and um, you know, there's a way, I know it may not be as immediately satisfying, but to reach out with your warmth and your connection. Now, let's face it, we all want physical contact. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying to avoid that. It's just something that you have to talk about with your partner in the context of the relationship. Certainly, you know the partner, you know, I, in, you know who knows? It may be just like in the, in the age of AIDS that, okay, let's go down and be tested. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's whatever it is, I think it has to be part of the, the discussion. Yeah. But yeah, I I'm think just, I'm that- I'm just seeing this at, at LabQuest or, or uh, a quest diagnostic, a lab cork, or any of these kind of diagnostic tests, having a Corona Friday, sure. you know, couple happy hour. Yeah. You know. Hey. Hey, Corona beer will get in on it. They could use the PR help, yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, or then you just have to really kind of tune into yourself and measure the level of risk that you're willing to mm -hmm. entail. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So Speed it's date urgent care. <laughs> What's going what on I'm now, hoping. how people are coping and what they think, uh, the, whatever the, the new future is going to hold. I'm, I'm trying to stop saying new normal because it ain't going to be. And we're not well, going to be going back to anything close to what things used to be like, right? You know what? Whatever it is. I think I have to say on that, we'll see. Yeah. I think it's going to be. want people to think about it. So we're yeah. going to. We're going to direct <laughs> folks to the Facebook page for Sex Talk with the Siegel Brothers, and there you'll see a link for the Survey Monkey uh, questionnaire, the survey that Dr. Sh uh, Sharna Stryer and I uh, collaborated on. And we're really looking forward to hearing from folks and, and getting that snapshot to see. And, and your feedback would be so helpful so that we could talk about it in a more grounded, quantifiable way. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's really important to have real, you know, real bits of information, not just these broad strokes. I think that we've been hearing. Yeah. But I also want to say that I'm hoping for the future is that the uh, I guess the more the the opportunity for more openness, for more, as I said, the courting behavior, for mm -hmm. more kind of. Uh, caring to know about yourself and about the other person and sharing. I think a lot of that got lost. And I think that this has been actually something that this pandemic has offered to us. 
Yeah. And I am hoping that it stays. Yeah. Another silver lining. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you again. We are really uh, always pleased to talk with yeah. you and grateful to have you join us. It is um, my pleasure. It's my pleasure so to much. see you guys. You look great. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. So you, you stay well. And I know we uh, maybe when we can start to be social again. I know you're stuck down here in Florida for the time being uh, before you go back to your practice in Manhattan. But uh, we'll hopefully see each other soon. Yes, yeah. indeed. So, Be well. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.